Hello, online pipe community. Ethan, Parsimonious Piper here. Today I'm going to wrap up, at least some odds and ends, my estate pipe hunting series. But first, in an estate pipe, a pipe by Lee, two star. This is an apple shaped church warden. I've got Mylan Centenary. A centenary is a very mild English. When you uh, when you get into this bag, I barely smell the Latakia. Not like the Star of the East or Pirate Cake bombs that I enjoy so much. And I don't taste a whole lot of it here. It, it's there. Let's get relit. Whew, I can barely reach that, Greg. Ah. It's there. But this is a, a soft almost a burly blend with a little Latakia thrown in on it. And it's not quite sweet, but it might be a crossover English. For those of you who don't like a heavy Latakia, this does have something nutty to it and not a ton of smokiness. There are Mylan blends that I prefer that have a lot more Latakia in them. For example, Triple Crown. Love the stuff. But this is good. Um, it, for those of you who like a, a milder English, th this might be right up your alley. number of you had questions, comments, suggestions, tips on things that I could include in my estate pipe hunting series. So let's take a look at a few of those right now. First of all, I had a number of people say, well, you've shown us a lot of good tips on things we should do. What shouldn't we do? Well, the most important thing you should not do is blow your budget. I'm not really kidding there. We joke about TAD and PAD, tobacco and pipe acquisition disorders. But it is really easy to get caught up in hunting for that pipe or getting into that eBay auction, spending more than you should. And by that, I mean, you know, if, if you're, um, if you're spending on a pipe is going to impact your food budget or keeping the lights on or paying your rent or mortgage, that's a problem. And just like gambling, it's a, it really is a problem for some people. Don't let it be a problem for you. As fun as this is, if you have other things that you need to pay off, you don't need a new pipe or an estate pipe for that matter. All right, lecture off. Um, scams, what are some scams, how to avoid them? Well, it's easiest if you're shopping in a state, if you actually are in a brick and mortar somewhere and can look at the pipe. Most of us don't have that luxury. When we are buying estates, we're buying them online. So, always ask for more pictures, if in doubt. I said this before, but I will repeat it. Ask for pictures inside the bowl. Ask for close-ups of certain areas of the pipe. Uh, ask for pictures of both sides of the stem. Ask for pictures with the stem disassembled. Make sure that you're confident in the quality of the pipe. There is a pipe out there on eBay right now that I would really like to have. It would add to my collection 
in terms of a missing shape. However, it has got a dark spot on the area between where the, the uh, shank uh, meets the bowl. And when I asked the seller whether he could post some closer, clearer pictures of that particular area, his response was, well, more pictures won't show you anything. There aren't any burnouts, blah, blah, blah. Well, I gotta tell you, if you won't post more pictures, I'm not interested in your pipe. So as much as I would like that one, hard pass. So those are, the, those are some of the kinds of things that you can do to avoid scams. Pictures, pictures, pictures. Um, any seller who is not willing to take the time to, uh, to show you some more pictures uh, is either on eBay and has, has met a minimum that he wanted bid for the pipe and so he's just lazy uh, or he's hiding something um, or he's just lazy, period. Um, not sure I want to buy from anybody who is not willing to share more pictures of the product they want to sell me. Just not going there myself. Talking too much. People asked how to find deals. Um, most of the pipes that I buy are on eBay. Occasionally Etsy. Um, if you buy from a site like smokingpipes.com, you do not have really an option to bargain. Uh, on Etsy, however, you can. You can always make an offer. I did that with a couple of pipes successfully. Uh, on eBay, there is very often a make an offer button. Now, many times the seller can't accept an offer uh, once somebody else has bid on a particular pipe or lot of pipes. So if you see one you like and you think you can offer more than the minimum but less than your maximum and still get the pipe, put an offer in. Sometimes they'll pull it out of auction and sell it to you. That's happened a number of times for me. Just by making them a, a truly reasonable offer on the pipe. Now, I'm not trying to scam them as a buyer. Lesser known brands. Don't be afraid to look at lesser known brands. I was surprised this week when a box arrived and lo and behold, it did not have the pipe by Lee that I had ordered. It had a pipe that said Sunrise, Amber Grain. Never heard of it. A little bit of online search, turns out Sunrise was a sub-brand of Comoys made in France, not England, um, and Ambergrain was one of their better lines. It is a pretty little pipe. I'll clean it up and show it to you sometime here. Um, I would not have looked at that simply because I'm a one-brand collector and they're sub-brands, but... Uh, if I were a Comoys collector, for example, uh, that would be a fantastic pickup. Or if I were just, if I were just looking for quality pipes out there, that that would have been a good buy. It it really is a nice little pipe. Does need some cleanup. Stems pretty badly oxidized, but the pipe looks solid. Don't be afraid of unknown brands. Um, when I say unknown, I mean unknown to you. When you get out there and and look online and see pipes. Do some, do some hunting around and find out, you know, who are these brands? Were they reputable? Um, if the price is low enough, it doesn't matter, right? Uh, you can throw away 15, 20 bucks and um, if the pipe, you know, turns out to be just a real wreck and non-smokable, well, you haven't lost a lot. I am just talking way too much. All right, next. Corvette Jim. Corvette Jim suggested, and it was a great suggestion, that you pick up a jeweler's loop. Here's what a jeweler's loop is. Now, you can get jeweler's loops cheap. You can get them expensive. 
10 to 15 bucks is going to get you a decent thing. Uh, the one that I showed you actually has an LED light built in on the back side of that uh, so that you can light up whatever it is you're looking at. Another option, of course, is to use your smartphone. That will give you uh, the same kind of, uh, of magnification um, and, uh, and, and built-in light uh, if you've got that. Jeff the Chef Piper on Meerschaums that have a threaded mortise and inspect them carefully for damage. That is obviously harder to do if you're buying a Meerschaum estate online. That's where insisting that the seller post pictures and plenty of them. Um, and it doesn't hurt necessarily to have some conversation within, uh, if you're doing this on eBay or Etsy or a platform, to have some conversation within the platform with the seller, uh, specifically discussing is the shaft broken? Is the threaded tenant, is that broken? Uh, or is it fully functional? Um, so that if it's not, when it arrives, you've got something that you can go back to the platform and say, hey, he, he sold me a bill of goods. Look out for scam shipping. Uh, this isn't going to be a problem if you're going to Blue Room Briars or uh, Pulver's Briars, uh, some of the the well-known sites or smoking pipes. Uh, shipping is a fixed thing. On Etsy and eBay, on the other hand, shipping is not fixed. Make sure when you are looking at the, uh, the bid price of a pipe uh, that you also are taking into account the shipping price. Brad the Bearded Piper told me, he got hit with a $30 shipping fee. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Five, maximum 10 bucks. And if it's 10, they better have packaged that thing really well. If I pay 10 bucks for shipping, I expect that thing to come in uh, where I could slam that box with a hammer and, and not have any chance of damaging that, that pipe. Because I can do that for five bucks. especially on eBay. Do not be afraid to bid on a lot, lot, not a ton of pipes. A lot of pipes is a group of pipes that are sold together. Don't be afraid to bid on a, a lot of pipes as long as you, uh, you set what is for you a reasonable per pipe cost. If you can pick up, if you can pick up a basket of 10 or a dozen junker pipes and you want to use them for practice and you can pick them up for 30 bucks. That happens all the time on eBay. And you just, all you really want the pipes for is to practice some of the things that I've shown you or that a couple of the other websites that I'll point you to, um, that they show. That's a fantastic way to learn to clean up and restore pipes. And chances are good. You're going to come out with some decent, pretty smokable pipes at the same time. So don't be afraid to go for lots. Another thing, don't be afraid to ask if there haven't aren't any bids on a lot yet. Ask the seller if there's only one pipe you're interested in. Hey, do you mind pulling that lot off the off the market? Sell me this pipe for X, and then you can throw the lot back up. I've had uh, at least three different vendors do that for me. Uh, when when I catch a lot that had a pipe I wanted before anybody else had bid on it yet. Now we talked a little bit about this when I did the cleanup videos. There's a difference between cleanup, repair, and restoration. For the most part, for the most part, I focus on pipes that need cleanup. Sometimes that cleanup is more involved than others, but I typically try to stick to pipes that need cleanup. Repair means you're actually fixing something structural that's broken or uh, going in and sanding out a, a pit or a scratch or uh, topping a pipe off because the, the rim is really chewed up. I've done that a couple of times. Uh, there you're repairing a pipe, um, although topping the rim isn't necessarily a repair, uh, but 
but filling in a, a crack or a scratch where that might develop into a burnout, that's a repair. Um, there are a lot more involved repairs that can be done, uh, but I try to stay away from those. And I also, the, there, there's a third thing getting into play here, and that is restoration. Are you trying to restore a pipe so that it looks like it was new? I don't do that. I try to clean up my pipes so that they're presentable, <laughs> so that I won't be embarrassed to smoke them in public, right? Um, I am not trying to get them into showroom quality because I'm not trying to resell them. Now, if I were, or if that's what you're interested in, then what you need to focus on is restoration. And that is getting that pipe back into the very best condition that you can if you want to get top dollar for it. The site, if I have to rec had to recommend a single site for you to go do that, it would be RebornPipes.com. These guys are fantastic. They have got just a ton of examples of pipes of all kinds from beaters to truly rare, valuable pipes that they have restored and they discuss the techniques. They don't have a, you know, a ton of videos up there showing you how to do it, but they talk about it in enough detail that if you study what they do over a, a number of different pipes, you will get a really good idea of how to go about doing a restoration on whatever pipe you have in hand. That is RebornPipes.com. Finally, someone asked, actually multiple people asked, well, how do I find out more about brand X? Well, there are three different places that I'm going to point you. The first is Pipes Magazine Forums. There's a wealth of information there. Uh, there's also a very inset snobbery against uh, the YTPC. So don't be surprised to find it there. I happen to enjoy that uh, platform anyway. It is an old school forums uh, with you know lists of links of the different topics and groups of topics and that sort of thing. Uh, it's uh, pure text, old school stuff. Uh, takes you all the way back to the mid 90s. But there is a wealth of information there um, if you don't mind having a little bit of mud slung at you periodically. Another really good site is Pipe Fill, and I'm going to put links to all of these uh, down below so you can find them easily. Is pipefill.eu. Now, Pipe Fill is focused for the most part on uh, stamping of different brands so that you can identify uh, by what's on your pipe. Um, as long as you can, you can get anything out of it, you can try to use their website to identify your pipes. There isn't a lot of historic information on there, but that's not what really what the site focuses on. It really is focused on uh, stamping and connecting brands together uh, in that way. Uh, the final site that I'm going to list is one with which I have an affiliation now, and that is Pipedia.org. Now, Pipedia.org does attempt to put together uh, some history behind the brands, including uh, some pictures, not uh, typically not extensive galleries of pictures of the pipes, uh, but more information about them. If you are interested in uh, beginning to learn how to date Dunhills, K Woodies, Graybos, any of the pipe, pipe brands where you can either get an exact or a range date for manufacture, this is the place to do it. Um, they because they have some some really in depth articles on how to date a K Woody on how to date uh, a Dunhill, that type of thing. Uh, those might be a little easier. K Woody's are, are a little harder. Um, but they, they have a lot of information on there. Uh, my affiliation is that I am beginning to fill in some of the information uh, or at least links between the uh, Pipes by Lee, Briarly, and Gold Coast brands. Uh, I don't have a ton of documentary evidence. What I have are things like uh, catalogs and 
um, when people have said, here's what I heard. I heard that Pipes by Lee made such and such a type of pipe. Uh, well, given the collection that I have, chances are decent that I can provide an example of that pipe if they didn't in fact make it. Um, so I, I'm starting to do things like that uh, with the site, but but pipe uh, pipedia.org, absolutely fantastic wiki. And uh, you you will get a lot of, of use out of that. Between that and pipe fill, uh, just for information, and rebornpipes.com for cleanup and true restoration. These guys are just, they're artists at the, the craft of bringing a pipe back to life. So I hope that this series has encouraged someone who may have been hesitant to buy an estate pipe. And, uh, and giving you maybe some good tips on what to do, what not to do, and a, a starter's glance at how to clean up a pipe. Because estate hunting, estate hunting can really be fun and it can be frugal. Um, you can spend as much or as little as you like. And if you're like me and like to spend on the little side, that's out there. Now with that, light something you like, enjoy your afternoon.